Good evening everyone and welcome to this evening's art stream. I hope everyone's had a nice day since yesterday. It doesn't feel like very long since uh, I was last with everyone, but then I suppose it hasn't been very long. <laughs> Um, so yeah, as you can see, I have worked a little bit more on this character since yesterday. Uh, this is the Ace Mod Blood Hunter that we started doing the paint job for uh, yesterday. And now, as you can see, since yesterday I've filled in the beard and I've started on the leather kind of jerkin tunic style thing that they're wearing. Uh, with this nice kind of padded effect here. Hey Cyber Spectre, welcome uh, and thank you for coming along. I'm doing very well, thank you. It's been a bit of a crazy day, crazy couple of days. Um, the last of the uh, folks looking around the flat left about an hour ago, so I had time to get ready to stream. And now I can just kind of chill for a little bit, you know? Uh, cool, so the first thing I'm gonna do, jumping back into this, is we're gonna add the shines on the little metal studs, which are going to be kind of permeating this uh this kind of top of this jerk in here so we're going down to a teeny little brush probably a nine and then just adding a little prick of light to show where these studs are <laughs> hey quingar 17 and lezeth welcome to today's stream i officially uh ordered my new camera uh this morning Annoyingly, I planned to buy it uh, from like Curry's or something, but suddenly no one has it in stock, so uh, it should hopefully be arriving on Tuesday. And so I'll uh, probably do a practice uh, stream with it when it arrives. Maybe I'll do some planning zoo or something like I've been threatening to. Um, and yeah, we can test it out, which would be great fun. Let's do the little ties as well since we're here. Just gonna outline where the little eyelets are. Good morning, Amy R and Quietly Freya, and welcome to the stream. And Ever Miss You Too, hello! I hope you're all doing well. Uh, we're gonna do this in black, I think, these little ties. Uh, we can always add a little bit of highlight to them once they're in, so about nine will do us. And then we'll just fill those across like so. Ah, I'm not Twitch, thank you very much. I uh, hope you enjoy the stream. Yep, D&D &D and art goes together to make a nice little combination. So, uh, thank you so much, Aviv Orr and Kulioli for following. Eh, there we go. <laughs> uh, thanks so much, Crew Bird, that's very kind. Yeah, it's quilted. Uh, so yeah, quilted leather for, for the top of the jerkin. Do I have an opinion on witch hats? Uh, they're always good. You can't go wrong with a good witch hat. That's for certain. Okay, I've got those ties in. Hey Rebel, oh, I'm sorry I'm missing the stream, but thank you for dropping by nonetheless. Lovely to have you here. All right, so we've kind of got the top of that uh, jerkin done. So I think what I will do next is we will make our way down through the body and do the lower half, which is going to be darker. Than the top so we'll make a new layer. Uh, as you can see I've been naming these layers quite wonderfully. <laughs> um, oh yeah the beard um, I actually did last night kind of between streams because uh, I had a, some time to work a bit more last night. So um, for a very dark brown I actually go with a colour that's almost pink as a starting point. I find that works better. So that's what we're going to start with. We might change it up in a minute. We'll see. Okay, yep, that looks all right as a starting point. And then what we're going to do is put in kind of the outer edge of this color. Then size up that brush a little bit. Like so, and then down to the bottom. I'm just going to paint over where the sword is for now. Uh, 
because it's easier to take away than it is to go kind of all around it super carefully. Ah, oh, the dungeon maker, thank you so much. Oh yeah, I bet Tarshish has quite a good selection of uh, um, of, of witches hats now I think about it. All right, then we just got the other side, or down the other side, as I find it easier to pull the brush down than to push it up. Sometimes, sometimes you just tidy up along these lines if I miss them a bit, but that's easily done. And then we just kind of meet up down here. And once we've done that, we're just gonna, oh, hang on. First thing we're gonna do, just make sure it joins up here. And then dunk filter. And then we're gonna just go around the edges to uh, tidy up, fill it in. Do we paint other people's characters like commission and such? Uh, so this character that I'm painting right now is actually a commission. Most of what I paint on stream is commissions. Um, I don't tend to have uh, enough time to do streams based on personal art, sadly. Maybe eventually I will, but at the moment streams are mostly for um, commissioned artwork. All right, and I'm thinking what I might do now is I might as well paint in the bottom of the jerkin as well while I'm here. Uh, thank you so much, Tiny Panda 33 for following. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to carefully go around the belt for now. Uh, we can always neaten it up later if we need to, but it's best not to have to, you know, it just saves time. And then we can fill and do the same thing we did before. And then some over here. Okay, a nice tiddly brush to get into some of these details. Ah, oh, Liza, thank you so much for the bits. Very, very kind. I hope you are uh, liking how this character is turning out so far. Since uh, this character actually belongs to Lezeth in chat. <laughs> oh, see, I don't think my line art is very tidy. Um, I usually subscribe to a school of thought that you can't be too precious about it. So my lines vary quite a lot. You can see that's not the tidiest thing in the world. Um, I guess it looks quite tidy when you zoom in, but um, I actually had to go through a lot of kind of just kind of mentally putting myself in like the thought that you don't need it to be absolutely perfect. It just needs to be clean enough and clear enough to inform the boundaries of the different sections. Okay, there is a tunic. So we're going to uh, just stick a outer lock on that, make a layer above, set it to clipping mask and hit multiply as to the layer blending mode. Then using a kind of pale purpley magenta color, there we go, uh, we're actually going to fill in the whole thing. And then, uh, this is how I kind of do my shading when it comes to clothes, we're going to select uh, white for our brush color. Hey, Fressy sir, some to you in ages, welcome back. Uh, and we're gonna pick up a really nice big brush size and with white, what we're gonna do is take away the shadow rather than adding light. Like so, you can kind of see where patches of light are starting to come in. Uh, usually you get uh, a fairly hefty shadow just kind of underneath um, the pecs or um, 
Uh, this tends to be a heavier shadow if the character's got larger kind of um, uh, cleavage, but this character is, is fairly flat chested. I mean, there's some very muscular pecs under there, but uh, yeah, so. Uh, there'll be a bit more light down here where the tunic is kind of crumpled in on itself a bit. <laughs> oh, I miss you. Thank you so much. And then I'm just going to gradually keep taking away shadows from parts of uh, the tunic that will be hitting the light. If you zoom out a bit, you can kind of see that nice crumpled effect is coming across. Sometimes you need to kind of blend between these areas of shadow a bit. I'm going to do that here. Um, yeah, a little bit here too. But yeah, that's coming along quite nicely. Um, and then I'm just going to do the same thing down here with this part. so lovely and then what we're gonna do is uh, just blend a tiny bit over here so we get rid of some of those stripy paint lines and then take a darker shadow color and we're gonna start adding in some deeper shadows as you can see And this is kind of like a, a matte uh, leather for this part of the jerkin. What is my favourite type of character to draw? Oh, now that is a question. I have a lot of favourite types. Um, I like colourful characters. I always enjoy tieflings. I think that's why I get quite a lot of them. Uh, people can tell I enjoy painting them. Um, but yeah, tieflings are fun. I love painting like swishy wizard robes, that kind of thing. Um, and like very decorative kind of royal clothing is always great fun uh, to design as well. Um, so yeah, that kind of thing. Um, I like kind of keeping mixing up a bit. So if I've done a lot of tieflings, like it's nice to do something else. Or if I haven't done them for ages, it's nice to do something like, you know, I haven't done for a while, that kind of thing. Um, hey, up to mischief. Thank you so much for the follow. Yeah, tieflings are precious. Uh, I love them. Having a lot of fun playing my Tiefling Barbarian at the moment in my Wednesday game. Hey, Pendragon Nomad, welcome. All right, so you can see all those kind of crumples are coming along quite nicely. Uh, I'm just gonna add a bit of shadow from this belt down here is going to naturally be occurring and then dropping down to a smaller brush we're gonna add shadows that are coming from these uh kind of clasps areas and also now i'm zoomed in a bit closer we can see the detail to be able to blend some of these areas a bit like so oh can you just see down there a little bit of opacity problem so we're just gonna eye drop and fill that in. There we go. That's better. Uh, okay, and then let's just carry on with where we were, adding shadow underneath the uh, closure clasps. <laughs> Folds in fabric are very difficult. I recommend literally just taking your clothes and studying how they work um i think honestly one of the most useful things i found for getting the hang of how clothing folds work is when i started to make cosplay and, and do kind of costume making of my own um it really kind of helped me understand how garments function and how um, the little folds work it seriously made such a difference um have i ever drawn a turtle i actually have a total commission that I'm uh, going to be doing in the next couple of weeks. Um, so I will be doing my first total rather soon actually. 
All right, so let's add a bit of highlight to this dark leather tunic. I'm gonna go back to sampling from all layers, start with our base color, go up a tiny bit, and we're gonna do this gradually, but with a big brush. We're just gonna start adding on these areas of highlight. And leather works similarly to skin, since it basically is skin. So that's a, a similar approach that I'm gonna use here. Coloring fabric is also quite tough. Um, again, uh, I recommend studying photos, eye dropping from photo reference. That makes uh, life a bit easier. Whoops, bring up brush settings. I didn't want to go away. And then with a smaller brush, we can bring some of these fold highlights down to the lower areas. They won't be quite so strong because they're not going to catch the light as much as the top is, but they'll still catch it a bit. So. There we go. Now we need to blend in this highlight color. So we're going to be sampling from between kind of the different boundaries of tone and just smoothing it over. Like so. Very similar to how I paint skin, to be honest. So that bit's looking smoother. Let's do the same on this side. We want to get rid of this kind of bubbly, stripey effect uh, that the brush was giving us. get a nice smooth gradient almost. It doesn't need to be completely smooth uh, because the final image won't be able to zoom in quite that much, but it does need to be fairly smooth. solely Photoshop um basically yeah pretty much just Photoshop um, I also I have dabbled in procreate and a few other apps but I find that Photoshop um, suits the way I work best so it's kind of what I stick with I know there are other, I know um, uh, Eclipse Studio Paint is a very good one um, but I personally can't get it to work the way I want it to with my tablet um, and the the resolution in the app just isn't um, kind of what I need so uh, I stuck with um, Photoshop. The other problem is Photoshop is kind of what most um, what most kind of schools support. They don't really have the other ones, so it's what I learned when I was younger. And uh, it takes a lot of time to relearn software or learn new software. And unfortunately, when you've got a commission quota to keep up, you don't really have time to do that. Besides, I, I don't mind Photoshop. Yeah, the subscription things, but but um, I use it so much, <laughs> so. Good evening, Angelus Lucis. Welcome to the stream. All right, just putting the little trim on the edges of the jerkin. And yeah, we have a nice functional jerkin. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna do these little clasps which do the closure uh, for the, the jerkin. And I'm just gonna do a tiny bit of, a tiny bit of highlight over here. There we go. That's better. Sometimes it's just a little thing that you want to see. Uh, and you just got to put it in. <laughs> so uh, let's see these clasps. I'm going to make... Uh, firstly, actually, I'm going to um, merge down these highlights because we're happy with those. Then make a new layer. And this is actually going to be... Uh, these are going to be the same colour as the quilted effect up here. So we'll eye drop off of them and then just start filling in these closures.
Yeah, Clip Studio, honestly, I've heard it's fantastic and has a load of cool features Photoshop doesn't. Um, but from what I understand, the brushes, brush behavior isn't quite the same. And um, I'm so used to painting with the brushes I'm familiar with that uh, that might be quite a big learning curve for me. I, like I say, Procreate, I found quite a steep learning curve. But that's more because I find painting on a tablet rather strange. I'm used to painting on, obviously, my screen tablet, which is heavy and fixed on my desk as opposed to an iPad, which is like, it's like, do I hold it on my lap? Like what's, it's not the most comfortable thing in the world. Oh, thank you so much, Raid123. That's very, very kind. Yeah, I wish I could open commissions again at the moment, but I am gonna be snowed under with work for a couple of months. I've got a, uh, a very, very exciting, but also a very big project I've been um, kind of contracted onto. And I'm, whilst it's like the one of the most exciting things I've ever done, it does mean that commissions I won't be able to reopen for a little while because I'm, of course, I'm also working through my commissions list at the same time, uh, especially because I can't work on NDA stuff on stream, so I will continue to do commissions and stuff. Um, so if you have already uh, booked a commission slot, you will definitely get it. Don't worry about that. But yeah, sadly I can't talk about my other other stuff that I've been doing lately because of NDAs. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pendragon Nomad. Um, I do rest sometimes, <laughs> occasionally. I think it's just going to be a little bit hectic for a while until we've kind of moved house and all that sorted because uh, that's just the way the way of it. Okay, now that we've alpha locked those, we can give them a bit of shadow because they're a little bit bright, especially the ones which are kind of more, especially as you go lower down, they'll pick up more shadows. Uh, so I might just gently shadow that one too. And then we're basically just gonna eye drop from the top part really, use that as our guide for the colors. And then just start to add the shading. And then blend where appropriate because obviously, once again, this is leather, so it behaves similar to skin and will need blending. Like so. And then we'll need some darker shadow as well in a few places. <laughs> I'm very excited to work on this character. I had a few kind of like um, planning sessions and brainstorming for this character and working out how I'm gonna do them. Uh, so when I do get to them quietly forever, I am very excited to see where it goes. Okay, that's more or less the shading approach we're gonna use for these. Uh, so let's move our way on down to the next one. <laughs> and you're picking up your puppy, aren't you? Yes! Oh, I'm so excited to see pictures. Honestly, it's gonna be so cute. Very exciting. Remember, have you told us what you're planning to name them already? I remember someone was yesterday saying they're planning to name their bunny Percy, which I think is adorable. Okay, so we've got that done nicely. So the next thing I want to do, going back to the overlines, we're going to just pick up a highlighting color. Yeah, that'll do. 
Oh, Leia, that's so cute. Oh my god, you better put some pictures on the Discord. Oh my god. I'm hyped to see Leia. Happy pictures sometimes just keep you going. I am very excited. I'm hoping in uh, second half of this year to pick up a puppy myself. Alright, let's put a little bit of central uh, shine on this knuckle. Oh, thank you so much to the sub gifts, Leather. That's very, very kind. Yeah, I do like Shepherdy breeds. Um, like I'm very familiar with uh, collies. My family's always had collies. I basically grew up in a pack. Um, but obviously, our house that we're moving into isn't really big enough um, for a high energy uh, collie. So we are probably going to go for a Swedish Valhund, which are similar to corgis, but I believe they have a few less kind of genetic problems and arthritis issues. Uh, and they're like little wolf versions of corgis. They're really cute. Um, very sweet breed. Oh, thank you so much, Cool Lily. This kind of shading is quite chill and like, just kind of do it on autopilot almost. It's almost like edge highlighting uh, when it comes to painting miniatures is what it reminds me of. Yeah, Swedish Valhans are adorable. They're like little potatoes. In fact, uh, if we if we did get one, we'd probably call it Tato. so adorable aren't they <laughs> uh, I love them right let's put on these buckles I think we're gonna go for silver um, because it matches the kind of stormy stormy vibes we've got so we'll start with this shade of purpley grey and probably go darker and lighter from there But yeah, the puppies uh, just look like little potatoes and they're so adorable. I've raised a lot of kind of large dog puppies before um, with my family. We've had a few litters. Um, but I've never raised a small dog puppy before, so I'm going to be- <laughs> I'll be egg so precious with them all the time, like, don't, don't touch my son, he's fragile. Right, going back up to the overlines layer. Corgis are, because they're still a herding breed at the end of the day, um, they're still part of the pastoral group. They just short, yeah, they got stocky little bodies. I think Valhuns are quite similar because uh, Valhuns are meant for cattle in the same way that Corgis are. Alright, let's uh, add some shine. Yeah, so I'm actually doing it more and more now with using a layer that goes over my line art because things like bright metal shines and stuff, if you've got line art getting in the way, it really dampens their effect. Uh, so I use um, a line on a, a layer on top of my line art now whenever I'm doing like shiny metal details. <laughs> See, I'm the opposite. I uh, never had a cat all my, at all in my life. All my friends have had cats, so I'm kind of familiar with them. 
because obviously whenever I'd visit friends, like I'd hang out with their cat and stuff. But uh, in terms of cat behavior, I find it so much harder to read than dogs because I'm just not familiar with them as such much. All right, Ellerin, welcome. Thank you as always for joining. Ah, buckle up for puns. Here it comes, everyone. Always, of course, you visit friends, you hang out with their pets. That's how it works, right? They they get blessed with my company. They're going to have to provide a pet to cuddle. <laughs> All right, and we have a nice uh, stylish jerkin. So the next thing I'm going to do is these little um, kind of, I don't know what I call them. It's kind of like the trim around the shoulder. So let's let's do that next. Uh, so I'll make a new layer for that. You can see there's a heck of a lot of layers going on here. <laughs> um, and we're going to make this a kind of inter between the two. So we're going to start off with this dark, rich brown. Uh, and start kind of popping that in. Thank you so much to the sub gift from Lezef to Bo Yasha. That's very, very kind. Thank you so much. <laughs> I really like uh, quilted parts on clothing. I want to learn to make it myself so I can add some to my LARP character. I really want to make a quilted kind of skirt, um, tasset type thing. And let's do the other side. <laughs> it's a good name, it's a good name. Good name and a good ship. Although I haven't watched the most recent episode yet, so no spoilers. How long have I been doing art? Um, it's a difficult question because I guess I break that down into two parts. I've been doing art since I can remember. I've just always doodled and, and kind of sketched and drawn since I was a little kid. Um, like I used to doodle with crayons and cut pencils and all that stuff when I was a child. But I, I kind of decided that I wanted to do art as a career when I was about 15. That was when I like made the decision. And I was very lucky that my, my family was supportive. Um, and they kind of support me doing this. They were a little bit concerned about the viability of making a living, but I kind of convinced them. Um, but so uh, that was very helpful. Um, and yeah, so I've been seriously drawing since I was about 15. So since I'm now 25, uh, about 10 years, I've been painting seriously. And that's about the same lot length of time that I've been doing digital art. I've been digital, uh, I've been painting digitally for about 10 years as well. Like, there were years when I paint a lot less. Like, when I was at uni, I wouldn't do much personal work painting. Um, I would sometimes have weeks when I didn't paint anything. Um, so, it's not, like, been as intense as it is now in terms of output every year. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's roughly how long I've been painting for. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. That's very, very kind. Uh, okay, so uh, we've got these nice little shoulder bits in. Let's do the little cat sleeves because this character has um, kind of like a, a short like shirt underneath with these little cap sleeves. So we are going to do that next. I'm just going to use a grey that's slightly darker than our background colour to start with to just put down the base. The buttery biscuit base. And then I'm just going to fill that in and go around the edges. I, yeah, I used to do uh, a lot of Naruto fan art. It's true. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I'm really pleased you like the hair colour because um, that was actually quite a lot of fun to do. I don't often get uh, that colour hair requested and um, I really, really enjoyed doing it. All right, let's uh, fill in this arm as well. Lovely, so we've got the cap sleeves filled in, so we're gonna make a new layer above those. 
make it clipping mask, multiply the usual kind of sequence of uh, events really. And then we're just going to pick that pale pink and fill it in to get our shadows. And then again, like before, uh, we are going to pick up a white paintbrush and use that to just chip away the shadows where we do not want them. following the shape of where the clothing folds are, so we kind of keep their nice kind of shape in. Like so. And then um, kind of eye dropping from where it's paler to do a bit of blending here and there. Like so, and then doing the same on the other side. <laughs> so I I went uh, there was a while where I was ludicrously behind on Critical Role, but I've caught up now. So now my next thing is I'm currently catching up on High Rollers uh, because I got really behind during lockdown, uh, and now I'm I'm nearly there. I think I'm on like episode 83, 84. Um, so I got a bit more to go until I'm ready to watch live again because I like watching these things live. But uh, soon I'll be able to. And don't forget to save. Thank you very much for reminding me, Eloran. <laughs> very important that we do that. God, just remembering the the feeling of my heart stopping on Wednesday when uh, our power cut and I lost about an hour's work. <laughs> the sad times. There we go, just popping in a few more darker shadows to uh, get a bit more contrast going. Alright, and then what we can do is we can go back up to that overlines layer. Oops, go back to all layers. And we can... Just add some highlights. Like so. This side won't have quite so much because it's more in shadow than the other side is. Like so. And the last thing I'm going to do for these little cap sleeves, I'm going to go to the line art there and we're just going to recolor the line art around them. Um, because it's a bit harsh right now. Come on, shut yourself down. Whoops. I'm going to make sure it's on uh, clipping mask or that will happen. And you can kind of see that this is lightening up the line art a bit. There we go. Right, so uh, I realised actually yesterday, well, I about more like five minutes ago, that this part of the arm should also have been done with the skin colour, so I'm going to do that now. Uh, yes, this character is an ASMR blood hunter. So, uh, starting, we use a darker colour as our base and then work up from there. I believe they are actually a Scourge ASMR, am I right, Lizoff? I'm trying to remember now. You'll have to uh, illuminate the chat. I've never played a Blood Hunter either, it sounds really fun. I've got a Blood Hunter in one of the games I'm uh, DMing, but uh, I've never played one myself. I don't worry about the, the messiness going over the lines up there, I'm gonna trim that back in a minute. And just following this line, not going over the sleeves as much as we can. Just gonna manually fill that and then paint in those edges. And then we're just going to tidy up down there and then we have the base for the arm done. So the next thing we can do is get our lighter skin colours and start uh, brightening that up a bit. Let's brighten that bicep. 
I said it yesterday, but I'll say it again. I bet this guy does some amazing sea shanty renditions. And then, of course, lots of blending to get this nice and smooth. Am I dealing a module or a homebrew? Uh, so, at the moment, I am running two games. Uh, I've run uh, a Rhyme of the Frostmaiden game with some friends of mine, using the, the new book that came out this year, well, last year. And I am running a Star Wars Edge of the Empire game, which has literally just started with um, uh, my partner and some other friends. And... Uh, for that one, we've started off with the beginner game set purely so they can kind of get the hang of their characters and make changes if they want to. Once that's done, I intend to uh, uh, I intend to do something a bit different. I intend to do my own kind of story coming off of that. Um, I'm probably going to fold in some of the other modules that exist into the story as we go along, but on the whole, it's going to be a uh, a new kind of homebrewed story. Yeah, we're gonna make this loud buff. And those biceps. And of course, every time we add another step, uh, another kind of tone, we blend it back. But yeah, I really like the Star Wars system. It's probably one of my favorite uh, game systems. Um, obviously 5e is up there, but Star Wars, um, FFG Star Wars is great. getting uh, the variation in here. Obviously we need some darker shadows in around the armpit. I'm just going to pop some in there as well. Yes, yeah, so for Rhyme, my Rhyme of the Frostmaiden group started out at level one, like the most baby babies ever to baby. Um, it was adorable. Thankfully they've made it to level three now, so they're not quite so easily killed. But like, there's a certain experience which goes along with being level one, I think, which is Literally anything can do me in, so I gotta be careful. And I kind of enjoy the energy there. As a DM, it's a very unique challenge to set encounters for that level of party that aren't just gonna TPK them. Alright, we're nearly done with this uh, section of the arm now. Just a tiny bit more blending along this bottom edge. And then a little bit more highlights, just like so. Let we'll blend in. Dragon Queen, I ran that years ago, back when I was learning how to do 5e, and that, that was hard, that opening chapter, it's tough. 
I think my party were level three. I might have bumped up um, the beginning level a tiny bit, but uh, I remember it being tough still. All right, there we have the arm uh, popped in. So let's save again, so we don't lose it all. And what to do next? I think the next thing I would like to do is um, going down the um, left arm and putting in those bandages. I'm just gonna double check what color they're meant to be. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, that's kind of skin reading me. Okay, so it doesn't say what color bandages are, but I kind of, oh, white bandages, there we go. So uh, for these bandages, I'm thinking, obviously they're gonna be a pale kind of white color. Um, hmm. But I want it to be different to the cap sleeves. I think they're gonna be slightly darker than the sleeves because these bandages have, you know, they've seen a lot of work. That arm's been busy chopping and blood hunting, so. Gotta hunt that blood. <laughs> so my Photoshop should auto say, the reason it doesn't is my C drive is uh, kind of messed up and super full and I need to go and audit and uh, sort it out and then reset my autosave. Cause I tried setting it to, I have a, I have a separate second hard drive um, and uh, it didn't want to change its autosave location, so I need to just fix up my C drive stuff and make sure there's space, basically. Okay, so let's get that last bit of base color in. Whoop. Lovely, and we are ready to shave. Um, so we're gonna do is make again this is the same process as I've used for most of the clothing that you've seen doing that multiply picking that grayish pink kind of color filling it all in and then kind of working backwards from there to remove the color and uh, add the light out of the abyss the most demoralizing is it still fun though I must admit I've been tempted to play out of the abyss a few times but if it's like hard to the point of making your characters miserable, then I probably would do something else. So rather than going on the individual piece of uh, bandage to start with, I'm gonna work out the rough shape of the light and then work on those individual bandages. Make this a nice soft blend before we then start doing the uh, the, uh, the sides of those bandages. Like so. <laughs> oh, Ellerin. All right, adding some shadow from the side of the jerkin, which is going to be present there. I think I'll start with the shadows and then move towards the light as we go. So going down to small brush, uh, we're going to work out which bits are shadowed and which bits are in light. Of course, here we've got some kind of rumpling of the uh, the bandage anyway. So that's gonna have a bit more in the way of folds in it. Like so. Oh no, that's really sad. Yeah, I'm out of my two characters. Um, one of them would probably prefer to eat food raw and the other one definitely cannot cook. So they're not very good at all that. Again, 
some variations in the texture here. We want the bandages to actually look like badges. play and do you, uh, you play the lots of raw food so uh, the character I play in my Tuesday game um, is a Twilight cleric sea elf and she's a little bit peculiar because she's actually like a sort of deep sea creature demigod the, the kind of the context for this campaign is all of the characters were once incredibly powerful almost deity or minor deity kind of like Ukotoa level power um, creatures who have lost all of their abilities and have amnesia and as they level up rather than gaining new powers they're gaining back abilities that they always had uh, so my character was basically a kind of a sea monster once which is why she likes eating her food kind of raw she doesn't really get why it's weird and why people keep spoiling perfectly good fish oh no I just realized she's golem <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Alright, so now we can talk about light a little bit more. So we're gonna go back up to a pure white uh, and start to add some more light to these bandages. And thank you so much, Alex Ward777 for following. And also Toka Moka Mesto, who I totally missed earlier. I'm so sorry. Thank you for following. I hope you enjoy the stream. Uh, we're just going to kind of really gently add kind of a light coming across on these bandages. We will add some more highlights to them shortly, but this is just the initial kind of lighting that we want to do. <laughs> I mean, I guess it depends on what you're playing, right? Uh, I know a lot of people's PCs who wouldn't save the civilians if given a choice, and that's kind of tragic. Most of my characters would. Wait, would all oh, my character? Mm. So my other character, my Tiefling Barbarian, kind of works for the Myriad, so uh, might not save civilians. But she's also kind of good. She's just a bit confused and ended up accidentally in her way into the Myriad. As you do. <laughs> you know how it is when you accidentally join a crime syndicate? Alright, back up to that overlines layer. Let's add some proper light onto these. Um, go back to the all layers. Thank you so much, Dice Cream Sandwich, for following. I hope you enjoy the stream. We are painting a delightful uh, ASMR blood hunter today. <laughs> I know what you mean. Um, most my characters are gen. Uh, my my characters are genuinely very uh, helpful, and I tend neutral good is what I gravitate towards. My tiefling is a bit more neutral, and my sea elf, she's kind of true neutral because she has no memories. So she kind of forms. She's forming her alignment as we go along, based on kind of what we go through and what happens to the party. And I found that a really fun way to play and start kind of getting to grips with her morality. Okay, so with that, I'm quite happy with those kind of that bandaged arm. I'm going to do the same thing I did with the sleeves, which is recolor the line art so it matches a little bit more nicely. Uh, so taking a nice big brush, we're just going to go all over that arm, basically. 
And there we have it. A bandaged arm. So the next thing I'm going to do, what shall I do next? I think it's going to be the other hand. Uh, I should probably do the blade at some point, shouldn't I? Swords are hard. It's hard to paint swords. Oh, I'm pleased you like him. He's uh, coming along quite nicely. I must admit, I'm fairly pleased with this one. Let's just uh, take that out now before I forget. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, let's do the other gauntlet. Uh, I'm just gonna make sure my reference is on the right page. Okay. It's time for a new layer, a new wonderfully well-named organized layer. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, we're gonna start uh, the top with, uh, he's wearing kind of like brown gloves underneath, so I think maybe we should, no, let's do the gauntlet first. You can tell I'm very decisive about this. Uh, I'm gonna start off with it roughly the same color as the clasps and change up from there. I must admit, uh, I'd never played a barbarian before my current character and legit they're probably one of my favourite classes now. <laughs> it's just so cool. I love having reckless attack. I love being able to rage, like this is great. Hey, thank you so much to Grace Ahofer. I hope I said that right for following. I hope you enjoy the stream. Gonna we'll lock this in and then we'll do the, the kind of hand part of the, the bracer at the same time down here. Yeah, so I'm usually similar. I usually lean into spellcasters. Um, I've kind of played druid, I've done warlock. Um, I do a really interesting abjuration uh, wizard with a, a fighter multi class, which I really enjoyed. That was fun. Nigh on impossible to hit. Um, but very fun. So this is one of my first. I've done Monk as well. Uh, Monk's very fun. What are the ones I haven't done? I haven't done Sorcerer. I haven't done uh, Paladin. Is that it? Have I done all the others? I must be. Oh, I haven't done Ranger. Um, what other am I forgetting? I haven't obviously done Blood Hunter or any of the. Uh, um, UA classes or anything. Thank you so much to Cape Worm for following. Wow, we're really coming uh, great with followers today, aren't we? Okay, so we're gonna add a little bit of tone variation to this gauntlet. We're going to add some slightly more uh, washed out brown. Kind of coming across. I guess you could call this a highlight. But I imagine it more of the natural coloration of this uh, leather. Yeah, I've, I've had a few paladins in games I've GM'd and they've just been amazing, like total force to be reckoned with. Okay. Thank you so much, Dead Pirate Shanks and Zuma8907 for following us well. Goodness gracious, we've got a lot coming in today. Thank you all so very much. And then I'm just gonna put a few signs of wear and tear just kind of give it a bit more uh, a bit more texture thank you lost astronaut as well for following okay like so uh, and then what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do my usual combination that I always do we're going to do some shadows so once again, grabbing that pale magenta, slapping that layer on top, we are now going to remove the areas in light. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I love following other D&D &D artists. There are so many great 
great artists out there. Like, I'm so excited whenever I see artists that I love who get involved with big projects. I'm like, oh, that's great. I just want to have stuff with your work on it. I thought I might as well shade these now while I was here too. These are going to be a different colour eventually. Alright, there's the simple kind of shading on there. The next thing to do is uh, let's add the kind of metal support struts which we have going on. And then there's also some slightly darker leather as well which is going to come across the top and the bottom bands. But since the multiply layer is on top of this as well, the shading we've done will apply to this, even as we colour it. <laughs> the dramatic drawing music intensifies, yep. <laughs> the same down here. Now it's gone like relaxed drawing music again. Okay, with that bit done, the next thing to do is the metal parts. I'm gonna eye drop from other parts of this which have already got some metal in, so we're not introducing too many new tones. Oops, going outside the lines a bit there. Okay, so the next thing to do is probably to add some tone variation and highlights. So we're going to go back up to the overlines there and start working on that. Oh yeah, biting off more than you, you can chew is what I do so many times. Um, yeah, I just, I'm really bad at uh, taking on more than I can when it comes to DMing, whether I plan a campaign that's just too big and too epic or uh, and I can't really deliver. Or I just sometimes I just struggle to run like more than one session a week, you know? There are different different people have different um limits. I'm gonna make this a bit darker and a bit more purple. And don't forget to save. Thank you very much, man. Please, I made that a chat, uh, a chat command. What a great, great day that was. Very wise. I think actually it was Stu that did it, so I can't claim any credit for that at all. All right, we've got that nice metal effect coming across now. Time to brighten it up a notch. Oh, thank you so much, Pumpkin the Faking. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, part of the thing about painting, especially in a more painterly style, is really perseverance because something can look kind of eh for ages and you're like, this is never going to get to a point that I'm happy with it. And then eventually you'll just add enough detail that you'll suddenly be like, hold on, I don't hate this anymore. And that's why I think that kind of perseverance is so important. to be quite like a dull metal which is why I'm not going super shiny with it. Uh, drawing layers of clothing. Do I plan out their outfit before I sketch? So um, the sketch is where I do most of the planning for the outfit. I don't think I've still got the sketch for this character here. No I don't. Um, 
but uh, I kind of, I, my sketches are very experimental for that reason. Usually I start a character with just the body form without any clothing on top. So when I draw a character, I usually start with like a naked version of them. Uh, sorry to everyone who's now learning that I've drawn their character naked, but I have, sorry. <laughs> um, and that means I can layer up the clothing naturally on top of them. Um, so it looks kind of natural. Um, and I find that's one of the easiest ways to get an idea for it. And like, I always have a lot of reference up. That's kind of super important. You want to have reference for the kind of clothes you're painting, um, the kind of fabrics, all that kind of stuff you need to have within easy reach. So you can kind of check, check those details out. Oh, crassy sass. Don't Starve is really hard. So I went back to Don't Starve last week and I hadn't played it for about a year. No, more than that. Um, and I just failed miserably. They've changed up all the farming and now I, I can't do it. I used to have like uh, an action plan for every time I played Don't Starve. Like, okay, first do this, then this, build some crops. And now they've made farming a lot more complicated. I was just not prepared at all. And uh, we died on like the eighth day. Which was a bit embarrassing. Because I pretended like I knew what I was doing. Alright, there is that gauntlet. Uh, I think it's time we'll do that glove underneath. I'm tempted to do the glove a very dark colour, the same colour as the tunic, because doing it brown, I think it'll get lost in the gauntlet. So, new layer. Um, and we're going to take this as a base, I think. <laughs> yeah, if you're overwhelmed by Stardew Valley, Don't Starve will probably be a bit stressful. Uh, it's it's a really great game. I love it. Um, but yeah, it's it certainly can be stressful, especially when you get to day... Is it 10? 9 or 10? When you have the first dog attack? And if you don't know what to do when the first dog attack comes, then that's usually where a run ends. Um, it took me a while to learn how to deal with that. Uh, so looking at this, I'm just gonna go back up to the skin for a second. Oh no, did I do this on a separate layer? No, I did do it on this layer, didn't I? I'm just gonna trim that back a tiny bit. There we go. Let's go back to our glove. <laughs> yes, this character is an ASMR uh, blood hunter. I believe they are a scourge ASMR. too. I'm not being too precious around the sword because the sword I'm actually going to do when I lay it on top of everything else. I often do that with weapons, um, bring them to the foreground. And this also allows me to see where I've gone over some lines uh, up here a bit. So I'm just going to cut those down. Cut them down size. Okay, awesome. Now we can do the shading on this and the highlights because there will be highlights. <laughs> Quick question, when if you open commissions again, what details about character do I need? So when I open my commissions, which is probably going to be March and I'll probably warn people now, the window will be quite small because I think I'm gonna have more work coming in contract wise around March. Um, when I open commissions, the most useful thing you can give me are visual references so if your character has like a face shape of, of someone um that that you know you can say oh yeah they've got a, a jawline like this person for example having that to reference is really useful or saying oh they like wearing clothes a bit like this with these fabrics um providing those kind of pictures is awesome i often find the best most concise way to actually show um reference images is to um make me a google doc with like all the pictures in, with some little text explanation as to specific bits that you want. And then to just ping me a link to that, usually when uh, when we've kind of got the commission process rolling. That's usually how uh, I like to do it. Of course, there are other ways, um, but that's like the easiest way for me. Haha. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that is kind of like a... You're right, that is kind of what Lone Star is. Stardew Valley, but there's no nice dates, and everything wants to kill you. And also, it's like, this is also kind of a weird Lovecraftian, creepy set uh, setting too. Alright, there's the glove. Now we're gonna save again, because it's a game of constant saving. Oh yeah, the art style is really cool. It's like really fun illustration. On that topic, was the amount of references good? Yes, so there's a what you sent me was perfect. And I hope that uh, uh, what you are kind of seeing is, is kind of what you wanted and what, what you had an idea that was the thing you were after. Let's do the belt. The belt is next. I like doing belts. Again, we're gonna make this a paler um, brown leather so it contrasts um, with the rest, with the very dark tunic. And I think the, the legs are gonna be quite dark too, so. We'll start with this lighter brown. Again, uh, I'm just ignoring the, the sword for now. That can sort itself out later. <laughs> yeah, rapiers do pretty well in uh, 5e, that's for sure. Just a little bit up here uh, that I need to do. This should have gone under here a tiny bit. There we go. Then we go back to the belt layer. Okay, lovely. Now, as usual, we're going to do the same sequence to make a clipping mask above it, set to multiply with that pale greyish pink. And boop. Thank you so much, uh, Nate Taylor F for following. Come on, thing, work for me. Oh, I haven't reset the color enough. There we go. That's better. Sub only. Blah, 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 blah. Trying to like look what that question. Uh, the Discord is uh, not just sub only. It's also for Patreon supporters as well. So uh, even if you only are like a one on one dollar a month on the Patreon, you should still have access to the Discord. It's kind of like one of the the reward incentives, I suppose. And then I'm just going to gradually add our highlights to this belt. Come on. Work for me here. Oh, we've got some creepy music now. <laughs> Which one's this? Ah, oh, right, yes. Uh, by the way, if anyone's curious, the music I use for my streams is all by an artist named Kai Engel. Uh, it's really good stuff. It's a wonderful kind of royalty-free uh, ambient music, which is really great for D&D and just general streaming. I find it quite, most of it's quite relaxing. Some of the tracks are less so. All right, there's a little bit of tone on that belt. Now we can try and add some more. <laughs> no, 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 you sent me an absolutely perfect amount of, of reference leather. It was really good actually. Very handy, especially when it came to like the face shape and how you kind of wanted the beard to be and the hair colour, all that. Very useful. This is a very dramatic music for painting a belt. There we go. I'm basically just using the same techniques we use to paint the belts uh, on the, the kind of like the closure on the tunic, just a little bit more uh, 
little bit more detail. Um, so um, you can tell if there's a specific uh, a specific file format you want, you're more than welcome to request that. My standard is uh, PNG files because they're high quality and they're good for printing that kind of thing. Um, and there is a limit to the resolution because I can only paint at such a large size before my computer starts to throw wobbly. And that's about uh, 4K in width is about the limit of what I can do. Um, because my I've only got 8 gigs of RAM and anything more than that my computer cries. Um, but uh, yeah, so I can offer different files and different resolutions. Uh, it's just up to, up to the commissioner really what, what specifically they would like. Uh, if you would like the PSD, I can absolutely give the PSDs. Um, people don't usually ask for them. So it's the kind of thing that you'd need to remind me and be like, hey, can I have the PSD? And I'd be like, sure, absolutely. You might want me to uh, name my layers first though. This music is very Castlevania. <laughs> yeah, that should be a new Koofy Gold, really, shouldn't it? New RAM. I'll try and save up in time for my birthday. the belt coming along. Uh, so you can, yeah, absolutely. So if, for example, uh, this character belongs to Lezef, if uh, Lezef wanted to just kind of crop it to get the profile uh, to use on like D&D Beyond or on Roll20 or whatever, absolutely they can do that. You can one, Once you've got it, you can do whatever you want with it. The only exception is if you want to use it for a commercial use, you need to kind of tell me um, because it does add a fee if you want to use something for commercial purposes. Because then, essentially, you need the license. If you want to use it in marketing materials, all that jazz, um, there is a little bit of a fee. Uh, just because, obviously, you can use it to uh, promote your own stuff and that kind of thing. And that's just kind of a standard for how these things tend to work. Okay, so um, with that, I think it's time to do the actual belt buckle itself, which is quite a hefty, chunky buckle. Oh, that's all right. Don't worry. It's no. It's good to ask questions and kind of find it out uh, at this point. Really, trust me. Commissioners are very grateful when people kind of have checked what exactly they they need and they want in the situation before they actually go in for the commission. I'm going to start with this very dark grey and then work lighter from there. Also, at the moment, my new camera is scheduled to arrive on Tuesday, so you can bet that when it arrives, I will probably do a rather impromptu test stream, and I'll probably play some Planet Zoo or something, and that'll probably be on Tuesday as a bit of a heads up. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's absolutely, Bean Benson, that's absolutely fine. Like, it would only count as commercial if it was being used for, like, a, a streamed game that was sponsored, that kind of stuff. So don't, don't worry at all about that. It's quite a specific circumstance. Dragon Nomad, thank you so much. <laughs> oh my goodness. No, the puns. I might I might just buckle if the puns stay this this punny. Alright, I'm just gonna do the same down here. Mm. 
And then we can jump up to a lighter colour. Boink! Thank you so much, Final Boss Fight Live. That's very, very kind. You know what? I am very lucky. I haven't I barely have any like trolls who bother me in stream. Everyone in the stream is just incredibly kind, lovely people. So thank you all so much. And I'm just very grateful I don't have to deal with any crap when I stream. And that's not the same for a lot of other streamers. So I count myself very lucky in that regard. <laughs> that's great. I kind of that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to create a nice relaxing atmosphere where if people want they can kind of learn and pick up a few things. And if they don't, you know, you just chill out. Enjoy a nice chill stream doing something a bit different. All right, let's put on the final shine. Whoops, Photoshop's just having a little freeze. It should come back in a minute. There we go. Let's save. <laughs> Let's just save, shall we? Yeah, time zones can be a bit of a pain, but such is the uh, the way, I suppose. I'm sorry for being in the UK. Oh, I should really do this on the Shiny's Lair, shouldn't I? It is right here. I think the only thing I've used the Shiny's Lair so far is uh, on the eyes, as you can see. <laughs> right there is a nice belt so i think the thing i shall do now is let's do this little side uh mini kind of belt pouch and then i wish it was more commonplace to wear belt pouches i wear them at, i wear them at empire and um they're so comfortable and like it's just having portable pockets which is, I guess, more relatable for some audience members than others. <laughs> the feeling of not having pockets when you need them. But, uh, belt pouches be cool. Yeah, I do. Um, I have only gone to two games so far. Um, mostly because, obviously, there were no games at all in 2020. Um, but I'm hoping that, uh, it runs again, at least in the latter half of this year. Hopefully. If not, you know, I'll understand it's a lot safer that way um, if it's not worth the risk. But uh, I'm hoping I can kind of support all of the creators and the people who run the system again. Right, so if I just join that up there. And, oops, that was the wrong thing. Boop. Then we can just fill in around these lines. Okay, uh, so once again, we are going to just put a clipping mask on there and do some darker colours to add some shading, in particular under the flap there. And the body itself is going to be casting some shadows on this, this bag. And then it's not going to be totally um, kind of regular all the way down because whatever's in the bag will cause it to kind of bulge a little bit as you can see and then again going slightly darker to do those really dark parts yeah Empire's really good fun I enjoy it a lot And we can kind of see there are a few bits on this belt up here that have gone a bit messy Oops. and over where we want them to be. So we're going to just erase them to bring them back a bit. Like so. And then a bit more shadow here and there, such as around this kind of edge bit. So you can kind of see the subtle kind of differences in colour there. And then we can add a little bit of highlight going on. 
And just because I know it'll make Ella unhappy, I will do some of this on the shinies there. It's kind of shiny. There we go. Whoop. Yeah. And there we have it. A nice little side belt pouch. And uh, I think this is probably a good point to end for now. We got quite a lot done. I'm really enjoying this character, how they're coming along so far. Uh, so let's do some links and chat. And while I do that, can someone remind me how you do a raid command? Because I haven't done it in ages and Mark Hughes is streaming at the moment. So I think we're going to do a cheeky raid there just to uh, say hi. <laughs> so, um, oh, oh, no. Yeah, yeah, Z Dungeon, Z Dungeon, bleh, Z Dungeon Maker. Um, I had to study a lot of those kind of master's charcoal drawings when I was at school. Um, and uh, yeah, that kind of thing's really, really useful. Um, oh, you feel like me with blue and brown. Thank you so much. It's very kind. Perfect, okay. That's good to know. Uh, excellent. So, let's do some links in chat. Twitter, first of all, if you want to find out when I'm next streaming, and see this work when it's finished, um, the best thing to do is uh, follow me on Twitter. That has the most up-to-date information and it also uh, will update when I do new YouTube videos, all that kind of stuff. There will be both parts one and two of this stream, uh, including the bit I did yesterday, it will be coming up on YouTube probably later this evening and or tomorrow, depending on how this evening goes. So uh, yes, so check that out if you missed yesterday's stream or earlier on in today. Uh, Sue, so, uh, the next one, uh, Instagram. I also have an Instagram. Uh, check that out for, again, artwork, costume making, miniature painting, general photos of life stuff. Uh, that's kind of what my Instagram's for, so that's that. Then ArtStation. If you just want to see my full portfolio, ArtStation is the best place to do so. Uh, it has basically all my, my best pieces on it. I haven't updated it for a week or two, so uh, I will probably need to do some, uh, some housekeeping on my ArtStation. Uh, Speaking of YouTube, here is the link to my YouTube for those who want to catch earlier VODs or earlier parts of this stream, or if you want to check out my Destiny 2 uh, video series which focuses on the lore of the games, uh, which is kind of like a chill sci-fi audiobook style read-through of some of the fiction that comes with those games. So if you like kind of cosmic horror and you like uh, fantasy sci-fi, please do check them out. They're great, great fun little short stories and I really enjoy reading them. Uh, so lastly, um, if you want to throw a bit more support my way, uh, here is my Patreon link. Uh, you can subscribe at various tiers which give you various different rewards and it's all good times. So uh, without further ado, rather than just going off today, we are going to raid a friend of mine. We're going to raid uh, Mark Humes because he's playing Stardew Valley at the moment. Uh, and yeah, it should be fun. Uh, so let's make sure I spell this damn channel right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you all so much for joining me today. Um, I had a lot of fun. We got loads done of this character. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's been a good one. And I enjoyed joining me yesterday as well. So I should be back uh, next week, most likely at 5pm on Wednesday. I might stream a little bit before that, depending on when my camera arrives. Maybe we'll do some Planet Zoo or Stardew Valley ourselves. Uh, and yeah, until then, I hope you all have a lovely weekend and take it easy and I will speak to you all very soon. There we go. We are going to be raiding in a couple of seconds. Thank you all so much for uh, joining me today. It's been, it's just been so much fun. Bye. <laughs>